Hello everyone, so this video is going to be a bonus episode on how to create your very own programming language. So in the last episode we finished our simple expression interpreter and in the next episode we are going to be adding variables to the language. But in this bonus video we are going to be adding a power operator to the language so we can type expressions such as 2 squared, 2 cubed or 3 to the power of 7 etc. So this video is going to involve updating the lexer, the parser and the interpreter. And what I recommend you do is pause the video right now and try implement the power operator on your own and see how much you've learned from the last three episodes. But anyways, uh, the first thing we have to do is update uh, the lexer. So I've decided to use the caret symbol for the power operator, but you can of course use whatever character you like. So the first thing we have to do is create a new token type and we're going to call this pow. And this token is going to be, of course, for the power operator. So we'll scroll down to the lexer, and we now need to do a check for the caret character. So I'll just duplicate this, and we will change this to the caret character, and we will then create a power token if that's the case. The next thing we have to do is update the parser to look for this new power expression. So to do that, we of course have to update the grammar rules of our language. So previously we had our expression, and that was a term, plus or minus another term, and then a term was a factor uh, multiplied by or divided by another factor, and then our factor was a number or an entire new expression wrapped in parentheses. So at the moment our expression is what takes least priority, so plus or minus. After that then our term takes more priority, so multiplied by or divided by, and then what takes most priority at the moment is either of these three conditions. So typing in a number directly, that takes the most priority at the moment. Typing in plus or minus before a factor, so a unary operation, also takes uh, the most priority. And then if we wrap a brand new expression inside parentheses, that also takes the most priority. So if we want our language to follow the correct order of operations, then the power operator has to take uh, more priority than this condition, but it has to take less priority than th those two conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to move those two conditions into a new rule called atom. And I just got that word from the Python language, but it really doesn't matter what word you use, as long as you understand what it means. So I've moved those two conditions into the atom rule. So now since the priority of the power operator is in between the priority of factor and atom, then we will create a new grammar rule in between those. So we're going to call this grammar rule power. So we will now copy one of these and we will uh, replace this part with a power uh, token type. So we will now change this from factor to atom because atom is the next grammar rule that takes more priority. But it actually turns out that the right hand side of the power operator takes less priority than factor. So we need to just put in factor instead. Now, as you can see, I'm being quite precise about the grammar rules for expressions in our language, but you really don't have to worry about being that precise. But if you are creating a language that you expect a lot of people to use, then it is always a good idea to follow the correct order of operations that's used in mathematics. So anyways, let's continue. So the final thing we have to do is update the factor rule to allow it to move on to the next rule, which is power. So we'll just add in an extra condition, which is just going to be power. Okay, so all we have to do now is uh, convert our updated grammar rules into code. So the first thing we'll do is create our new atom rule. And we'll just copy and paste this. And since we've moved those two conditions from factor in, uh, into atom, we need to do the same thing here. So we'll take out these two conditions and we'll move it into the atom uh, rule. And we need to change this to an if instead of an elif. And we will now put in a new error if it doesn't find what it's looking for. And our factor has to now return a power if it doesn't come across a plus or a minus. So we will just return uh, self.power. And now we need to create a new power uh, method. So this is going to be another binary operation. So we can just reuse our binary operation method from before. So we will return self.binary operation and our left function is going to be atom so we'll pass in self.atom. We are only going to be looking for one token type and that's the power token type but we still need to put it inside a tuple. And then our right function is going to be factor so we'll type in self.factor. 
Okay, so I think that's it for the parser, but you might be wondering why inside the atom method when we create an error, you might be wondering why we also include plus or minus. Because our atom is now only looking for an int, a float, or a left parenthesis, so you're probably wondering why we still include plus or minus in the error message. So the reason this is the case is because atom is only ever called from inside the power method, and the power method is only ever called from inside factor, down here. So as you can see, the factor method isn't creating its own invalid syntax error, it's just returning the one that will either come from self.power or from another self.factor, which again we'll just call self.power. So this means since the factor is looking for a plus or minus, we need to include that in the powers error, and the power is a binary operation which calls self.atom, and therefore the atom method has to include plus or minus in the invalid syntax error. So that's kind of the pattern you have to follow when you create your error messages. Okay, so the final thing we have to do now is update uh, the interpreter. So we're going to come down to the visit binary operation node method, and we now have to look for this new power token. So we'll duplicate these two lines and we'll add the check for power, and we'll have to create a new method inside the number class uh, to do power operation. So we're going to call that powered by. So if we scroll up to the uh, number class, we can come down here and create a new powered by method. So we'll just check if the other value is a number. So if that's the case, we'll just return a new number and we will power self.value uh, with other.value. And in Python, the power operator is two asterisks. And we also have to call set context with self.context and then pass in none as the error. So I was about to run the code, but if we come back to the parser, when we call the binary operation method, we are passing in two different uh, functions to call atom and factor. But it turns out that our binary operation method only supports one function at the moment. So we're going to quickly just fix this. So we're going to create function A and then we're going to create function B. And we'll default function B to none and then we'll just check if function b is equal to none, and then we'll just set function b equal to the same thing as function a. So that means we can now call function a here and call function b here. So if we run the program now, we should be able to use the power operator. So if we do two squared, we get four. If we do two cubed, we get eight. Seven squared, that should be 49. And if we do something ridiculous, such as seven to the power of minus, as you can see, the new error is working fine. It's expected an int, a float, a plus or minus, or left parenthesis here. So that's that's all working correctly. So everyone, that's going to be it for this bonus video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and leave a comment if you have any questions or problems and I will try to help you out. So in the next video, which should be out in about a week, we will be finally adding variables to the language. So thanks everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video.